Welcome everyone to our service this morning. I want to read to you from Ephesians 6, start, starting at verse 10. And now when it says, finally, my brothers, he's not saying in conclusion here. What he's saying is, insofar as the rest of your life and its challenges are concerned. Wow, how cool, right? So in as so much as the rest of your life and its challenges are concerned, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not flesh fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up. This is a command to take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, the word of God, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, what Jesus provided, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, sharing with others his love. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which with you will be able to quench some, no, all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints hallelujah thank you lord jesus that he provided for us the armor of god hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. See how I'm saying? The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm 
joy compares with Oh, Jesus. I know that's where you'll be. That's how we fight our battles, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We worship your name. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Sunday service. I'm so glad you're with us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I want to continue today on this series that I'm working on. And it's about picking up batons and continuing with what somebody previously started. Hallelujah. We can see the pictures in the scriptures. And so we looked at a couple of weeks ago, the baton that Isaac picked up from his dad. And that was the baton of power and increase. You see, the Lord wants us to be on the increase of everything, not just financial, but of spiritual things, of our character, an increase in the goodness of who God is in our lives. Hallelujah. And so today I want to take a look at Joshua, who picked up the baton of Moses. Moses had laid his hand on him prior to his death. He prayed for him and he imparted wisdom on him. Hallelujah. But we also know that Joshua was a fierce leader. He was a person who wasn't afraid. He was a warrior. Hallelujah. And so he brings his band of warriors across into the promised land and conquers. He didn't conquer everything. He left some for the other generations, but they failed, but then they gained again. They failed it's like a roller coaster. All of this in, in Judges and Samuel and Kings, it's just a big roller coaster right up and down. But nevertheless, I want to pick it up where in Joshua chapter 1, centuries before this baton was picked up here from Joshua, God had promised Abram and his descendants that they would, they would be making a great nation and he was going to give them the Canaan as a homeland, as a place where the children of Israel would live on the condition that they remain faithful and obedient. And we can see that in Genesis chapter 17. It's about following him by faith and being obedient to his word. And we see that Abraham did that when he brought his son over to be sacrificed. He obeyed God. He was faithful, even to the point where Wow, that, that just shows a lot. And it's that kind of obedience that the Lord wants us to have and faithfulness that he wants us to have for his word and for what he's telling us to do. Hallelujah. So then Abraham made a covenant with God and his covenant was that every male would be circumcised in the flesh. Now let's take it from Genesis chapter 17, 10 to 14. It says, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations. Not just his. All the way through. He who is born in your house. Or bought with money from any foreigners who is not your descendants. 
He was born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Now, today, the covenant we have with Jesus Christ in his blood is a different kind of a circumcision. It is a circumcision, but it's a circumcision of the heart. But this time, it's not just the males, it's everybody. Hallelujah. Every man, woman, and child who come to him and receive him will have that circumcision, that mark of accepting his sacrifice. Hallelujah. And this is where we begin our journey with Jesus from a circumcised perspective or a point of circumcision in our lives where we say, I'm following you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And so that circumcision is that separation unto him. Praise you, Lord. That's our identification that we are of his. As they did in the old, as they took off the foreskin of every male, that was to identify that they were circumcised unto him and separate unto him. Now we have that, from, but from our hearts. It's a spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. Well, let's pick it up where Joshua was picking up the baton from Moses. So he was at the threshold of experiencing the fulfillment of that promise and all the promises that came, the promises of being blessed, hallelujah, and being a blessing, like he says in Genesis chapter 12. Let's go to Joshua 1. We'll read the whole chapter. Say I'm on the threshold of something big in my life. Hallelujah. Say it. I'm on the threshold of something big in my life. Hallelujah. I hope you see that today. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan. They hadn't crossed over the Jordan yet. Now, he's telling them, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Hallelujah. So the Lord is giving them, he's giving the land, the children of Israel. It's a different way of understanding things. This is the land that he's giving them. The land is going to receive the children of Israel and the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the power of God and the power of the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, true believers are a different breed. They're from a different breed. We are born again into a whole different mentality and mindset. When a believer passes and enters into glory, we rejoice, we celebrate, and we do so with gladness and joy, but yet we still, it's normal for us to shed tears. In the last chapter of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, the people, it says, mourned Moses for a whole month. So there is a time of mourning when you lose a loved one, but we do it differently people we do it so differently we do it with an absolute surety that he or she is gone to be with the lord hallelujah now it says every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon i have given you as i have said to moses what i'm getting from that is luke 10 19 it says behold i give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions see that there's that treading that's going on it's a verse that says, you're a conqueror, hallelujah. You can defeat everything that's before you. And it's a scripture I can put together with verse 3 here. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, hallelujah. Every serpent and scorpion that you will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness. Now he's describing here the boundaries and, and where he's going to be bringing them. And he says, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, speaking about the Mediterranean Sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. See, every place within the boundary I am giving you is yours and yours to keep. That's what he's saying. I'm giving it to you. It's yours. All you got to do is conquer it 
with my help, I'm, I'll be there. I'll be walking right beside you. As a matter of fact, I'm going before you. And that's an amazing thought and, and a real assurance in our hearts that God is always going before us in everything. Jesus is always going before us. All we need to do is follow right behind, step by step. Hallelujah. So he's given them these, these boundaries here. Well, I'm thinking about that when I'm reading this and, I, and I'm putting this together, this message. And I'm thinking, well, what about our new covenant with Christ? We just read God gave Israel of old in the time of Moses an exacted area allocated to them by God. But we, in contrast, as a church of Jesus Christ, we have been allocated the entire planet. You ever think about that before? They get a little chunk of land, but God is saying in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, go into all the world. It's ours. Hallelujah. We can go preach the gospel to the lost people of Hawaii, to the lost people that are held captive by the devil in the Bahamas. Sure, it's a great vacation spot with a lot of sunshine, but let's get our priorities straight here. Let's get them straight. There's devils there also. I know it's a nice place to go and all that stuff. We want to go there. Let's go preach the gospel. If I was to go there, I would call my Caribbean ministry Big Wave Ministries. I'm going there to make some big waves. Hallelujah. Or if I was to go to Hawaii, it would be like a preach on the beach ministry of some kind. That's what I would do. We can go anywhere in the world. That's what I'm trying to say. We can go anywhere and everybody can, seems to pick up all the nice spots. Who wants to go up in the Arctic or who wants to go where it's cold? Somebody's got to go, but I don't know if I had a choice. I think I'd like to go somewhere like where I just said. Do some big wave ministries or some preach on the beach ministries. That'd be cool. Get a nice tan. Preach the gospel, though. Make sure that's priority. Get people saved. You know, cast out some devils. Do all kinds of good things. Expand the kingdom of God on the beach. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyways, I'm just letting my mind go here. It's always fun to, to think and to dream. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we can go anywhere in the world. See, we have a greater footprint and greater opportunities. You can do a couple of things through Christ who strengthens you. That's false. Actually, we can do all things because we have been given the authority and power to accomplish all things. That's what Jesus said. Look at Matthew 28, 18 to 20. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, including the Caribbean, including Hawaii, including the Fijis and Bora Bora and all those nice getaway places. And then baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And look at Mark 16, 15. He says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's our landscape, the whole world. Actually, even on the water. It doesn't matter where we are, we can preach. As long as we're on this earth, we can still preach the gospel anywhere. We're not stuck between the Mediterranean Sea and the Euphrates River all the way down to Iraq. We have it all. Praise God. They had a good covenant, sure, but we have a much greater covenant. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, No man, Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord is saying to him. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only again, he says it again, verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. He's upping it here. Be very strong. Be strong and very courageous. You're not to have a lot of courage because there's going to be a lot of enemies that you may observe to do all the things of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it. He's talking about God's word. Don't turn from my commandments. Don't turn from God's word. Don't turn to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. In other words, if you have a dog, do you ever walk your dog? An untrained dog I'm talking about here. Don't go around like an untrained dog sniffing into someone else's poop. 
That's what the picture I get from all of this here. That's what God is saying. Don't go around like an untrained dog sniffing into someone else's poop. The word of God must be by our own will, leashed around our necks, hallelujah, as a sign of submission to it. When an owner doesn't train his dog properly, he's all over the place. You're going to the right, you're going to the left. But God's word says, do not go to the right or to the left. Go to where my word is leading you. Go to where I'm telling you to go. We must be submitted to God by his word. Hallelujah. So we don't go back and forth and smelling this and smelling that. You know, this world's got a lot of sense all over. Go where God tells you. Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say in verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe. That word observe means to keep guard, to watch over and heed. That's what we need to do. We need to keep guard with the word. That word, we've got to keep it close to our hearts. We've got to watch over it and heed it. That means obey it, to do according to all that is written in it. Not what you think is only important, but all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Praise his name. Verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you, Joshua? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So he says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to be wherever you go. I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. Okay, that word dismayed means don't be shattered. Don't be filled with terror or disheartened. God is with us. We have no reason to be afraid. We're still growing in that. I realize that we're in process of developing and maturing. The more we keep reading it, and the more we keep repeating it, eventually it's going to sink in. So I'm telling you today, don't be shattered. Don't be filled with terror and disheartened. Don't be full of fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For God is with you. Hallelujah. What more can we ask? There's nothing more we can ask. Just God's presence is the greatest thing we can ever have in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Then he goes on to say, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp. And command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. So there's the Reubenites and the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, they're already in their land on this side of the Jordan where Joshua was before he crossed over. But they're still bringing their armies to help. And then they're going to go back across the Jordan and go back to their families. He says, Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. But you shall pass before your brethren armed all your mighty men of valor and help them. Until the Lord has given you your brethren rest as he gave you. And they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Hallelujah. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it. So it's a teamwork. It's 12 tribes which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan toward the sunrise. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you command us, we will do. Now, this is the people. So God spoke, Joshua spoke, and now the people are speaking. All this you command us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so will we heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he has been with Moses. And we know he was. Hallelujah. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. General Joshua is now the leader. I like to call him General Joshua or General Josh. He's the leader of the nation of Israel. He has been handed the baton from Moses. 
He's got a baton and the spirit of wisdom on him, and he's itching to get going because he's got to go to war. Hallelujah. He made it clear to Moses, I'm not a grasshopper, and I'm not woke. Let's go and get our inheritance. See, when they sent the 12 spies, him and Caleb came back and says, oh, man, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I'm just paraphrasing here. You have given us this land that God has given us. We can take it. It's ours. Surely we can take it. Yeah, there's monsters in there. Yes, there's all kinds of big guys and they're fortified cities. God is on our side, man. He parted the Red Sea. He did those 10 plagues and he did all those things before our eyes. If he did that there, he can do it up there. Hallelujah. We kicked Egypt's butt and sent him back to the Stone Age and God will do the same thing to these Canaanites as we obey and walk in his ways and his statutes and commandments. See, he's full of faith. He's ready to go. He's itching to go. He's got that. And, and then he gets his orders from God. Arise, let's go. It's been a month now. But first, his new generation must be circumcised and set apart unto him. Now, we're not looking at that. That's in, a, in chapter 5. And so, this war and wisdom baton teaches us strategies in warfare. The main strategy is this. As we believe... The battle is already won. And I'm talking about today. Whenever God calls us to do something, He's already given us a victory. We're just so fearful sometimes that we're not going to get the victory. But God has always called us into a place of victory. He's always going before us and prepares the victory. And then God miraculously fights for us as we believe and obey. See, it's His strength in us, His ability in us, his bravery and courage in us that wins the fight. Yes, we're the ones that are clinking the swords. But man, he does so much more inside of us as we do it. Hallelujah. So it's basically him who wins the battle. Now, when it came to certain battles, there was a lot of clinking of swords. But some battles, they didn't have to do anything. Like we looked at Jehoshaphat a few weeks ago. And even in future battles with Joshua, the battle of Jericho, he's the one that pushed the walls down. Hallelujah. So he did a lot of the battles for us. So the battlefield is in our minds. We fight the fight that is within ourselves. The fight of the enemy speaking to us and saying, you can't do that. Look at the size of that guy. You're going to get defeated. As soon as you step on there, he's going to gut you and you're dead. That's it. The moment you go out and take a risk and believe for this, and believe for a new house, believe for a car. You think God's going to give you a house? You think God's going to give you a car? This is what we have to deal with all the time. But you know what? If we believe, God will give us the desires of our hearts according to his will. Praise you, Jesus. So we fight that which is unceasingly comes against belief and obedience. Whenever we want to believe and be obedient in, there's always going to be something in our minds that's going to come against that. So we fight against incoming fears and doubts. We fight against lies and deceits that are trying to establish and root themselves in our minds and thoughts. And we go through that every day, every single one of us. It's what we do with these thoughts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it is, around verse 4 or 5, it talks about taking our thoughts into captivity. And so that's what we do. We take our thoughts into captivity. Praise his name and we cast them down. We can take control of what comes in our minds or what happens to when things come into our minds. We can't stop it from coming into our minds. We can't stop temptation from coming, but it's what we do with the temptation, how we take it down. Hallelujah. That's going to make a difference. Praise you, Lord. So we fight false perceptions that aims to weaken our belief system. So that's what's really going on. That's the baton I'm talking about here. In this day and age, a believer must be strong and courageous to fight the good fight of faith. That's the baton that we have today. We're picking up today a baton called war because we have to do spiritual warfare every single day of our lives. We have to come against the enemy every single day. And wisdom, but we got to know how to do it. We have an armor in Christ that protects every vital area prone to enemy attack. So what strategies of war can we draw from Joshua and the current generation of his day? Well, for one thing, there has to be a plan and a dialogue in the initial preparation. And it must be God's plan. 
It's got to be God's plan. We can't be our plan. See, the plan in a nutshell is to be equipped through prayer, through faith and belief in Jesus in order to destroy the works of the devil, to create an open heaven over our lives in order that when people come around us, People come and talk to us. People we meet on the streets, in the marketplace, wherever we are, can be saved and blessed. We can see that happening as we are obedient. Things like that will happen. Praise His name. Now, this chapter has three voices, okay, with three different directives. Now, the first one, Joshua hears the command. It's the voice of God. In verses 2 to 9, the Lord speaks to Joshua with definite precision. He said in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. He's gone to Abraham's bosom. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. See, Joshua was given the baton of wisdom and war when Moses laid his hands on him. Look at Deuteronomy 34, 9. It says, Joshua, the son of Nun, was full, full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Hallelujah. Now the voice of God in this chapter releases an encouraging word to Joshua to stand, to be strong. And that word be strong means to have the ability to accomplish what is intended, implying an element of resolve is needed as well. That means you have to have a resolution inside of you saying, we're going to be strong and this is the plan and it's going to be accomplished. Hallelujah. Go and finish the job I've called you to do, Josh. I started with Moses. Moses is dead. I'll pick up the baton. Let's go forward. You're the new leader now. You're the general. I'm telling you what to do with precision. And then he tells him not only to be strong, but to be of good courage. In other words, to be brave, to be bold, to be determined, to persist in, to prove and superior to. In other words, Joshua and the boys, be like David the shepherd who hasn't been born yet. This is about four generations, four or five generations before David was born. But David had all the courage and he was strong. Like, I'm just making this up. Be like who David was going to be like. So show yourself to be strong and bold, determined. Hallelujah. See, the voice of God is clear as it comes to his word also. And he goes on to tell him in verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You know, for everyone who obeys God's word, there will be an increase in all things pertaining to life and success in God's joint venture with his people. Do you realize you are in a joint venture with Jesus right now as you're listening to me? But Joshua was with God, but we are today with his son Jesus. Hallelujah. We are in a joint venture with the Holy Spirit inside of us, walking alongside with Jesus. Hallelujah. To do his will. See, that comes with knowing in your heart that you belong to him as one who is set apart to do his will. See, his laws must be meditated upon. His word must be meditated upon so that you may keep it in your heart. I've been talking a lot about, over the last few years, about taking time to read Psalm 119. And it's basically meditating on the excellencies of the word of God. See, God's word is excellent. It's excellent in all of its ways. There's so much excellencies in his word. And so everything we do as born-again believers is a joint venture with God. You are not alone. And so we get to know him deeper when we begin to meditate on his word, taking time to ponder. Hallelujah. See, he's always with you, and we both have a part to play. As soon as we take one step toward God, he comes towards us. As soon as we say, yes, Lord, he works with us, and he walks with us. Hallelujah. But when we don't obey, we kind of tie his hands for the plan that he has for our lives. 
So when we do ours, which is obey by faith, okay, then he comes in, moves heaven and earth, and accomplishes what we ask according to his will. I look at it this way. We throw the first pitch, and God just hits it right out of the park. Hallelujah. You obey, he does the work. Praise his name. And for that to happen, we need to be meditators and observers of every word that God says. His word is good. It is good food. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord God, for the richness of your word. It is life. Hallelujah. Even right now, as you're thinking about this, what is the Holy Spirit revealing to you today as you ponder and linger on his word? What is he saying to you right now? as I'm speaking about what I've been talking about. I'll guarantee you he's saying something to you at this very moment. You know, you could be listening to it and be thinking about your ball game or your hockey game or whatever it is. That's fine, but you're not going to get anything out of it. But if you're truly listening today, what I'm telling you, what is he saying right now? Because he's speaking to you right now. He's letting you know something in your heart. See, that's why he wants you to meditate, to chew on his word. Mm, his word is so good. But if you're in line with the very heart and core of that word, it will increase your faith and Jesus appears much bigger than ever. Hallelujah. Remember the diversity and complexity of the flavor of a coffee bean. They have multiple aromatic tones, we call it, such as fruity, chocolatey, nutty, spicy, even floral. Depending where the bean is grown, in Colombia or in Kenya or in Arabia, wherever it is grown in this world, because of the soil, it will have a different flavor. But it's still a coffee bean. At the end of the day, it's still a good cup of coffee for you. It may not be so much for me, but it may be for you. And you say, that is good coffee. That is a great coffee bean. It's still a coffee bean, just had a different flavor. And so the Word of God is still going to be the same. It's going to have its same conclusion. You'll just see it partially different. That's all. So just meditate on the Word and you'll see where the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. He'll enrich your life. And the last thing the voice of God tells Joshua is a reminder that he has already spoken. He says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When God tells us 365 times, do not be afraid. See, there's 365 times it says it in the Bible. One for every day of the year, they say. So that's a reminder every day. Do not be afraid. I am with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. See, we tend to forget so easily. That's why we should never stop reading and studying the word. Read the Bible over again. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Read that chapter again. Read that verse again. Read that book again. Get the full flavor of it. Get the full intensity of it. And then you'll see how much you're going to grow. I can get lost in the Word at times. I lose all sense of time. That's what happens to me sometimes. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh my goodness, i got to get going. I can do that for sometimes two, three, four hours. And I'm going, whoa. I get tired. I may have a sore back. Get up and stretch my back. And I'm going, oh, wow. Did I ever get a lot of done? The Lord really spoke to me. So that's me. But if we're diligent in the Word and have the right attitude when we read it, there will always be something new about it every time. Hallelujah. Are you getting something out of this today? I hope you are. We are a people who need to trust in Him and obey Him and have faith. And we can only get that through His Word because there's a work for us to do. Just like Joshua had, he was about to enter the Promised Land and he needed that confirmation, that word from God, be strong and of good courage. See, in the last two years or so, I have mentioned repentance in almost every message on our online preaching. I've mentioned it quite a bit of times. And repentance is always worth repeating and reminding that we need to take time to repent because there's always going to be a need for that. We're always in process. If we're going to advance in the process of being more like Christ, there's always going to be a repentance, always going to be a shedding and a casting away of something, a, a turning away of something in our lives so that we can become more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, secondly, Joshua gives the command. Now, he, he heard the command from the Lord. Now, he gives the command. Here we have Joshua's voice 
that speaks to his officers in this chapter, starting at verse 10 all the way to 15. Now, as the new leader of Israel, as that general, General Joshua, he gives the orders to his officers to tell the people to prepare provisions for yourselves. Because within three days, we're crossing over and we're going to possess the land. Hallelujah. Now, prepare in the Hebrew means to make ready, means to erect, to set up, to determine, to fix, to appoint, to be firmly resolved. In other words, be prepared that you didn't forget anything, that you, you've covered every aspect of what you need to go with. You need to go with the Word of God. You need to believe God. You need to, to bring enough food. You need to bring this. You need to bring that. Your sword, your, your shield, everything you need. Make sure your shoes are put on tight. Make sure you got your pants on. Make sure you got everything. Make sure you thought of everything. You know when you go on a trip sometimes, you get halfway done and say, oh, we forgot this. We forgot that. We for ah. You weren't prepared. But God is saying, prepare. Bring provisions. See, preparation starts only in one place. The heart. We've been preparing here for a long time. All this preaching online and I'm preparing people who's listening to be ready because the Lord is coming. And so we need to be always in preparation, in a fighting mode, not fighting with people, fighting against the enemy. It's a spiritual battle. We fight in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. So we prepare for battle in one area, fight the good fight. In another, hold on to what we've won and move on to the next area of battle. It's what we got to do. We got to learn to war. This is a war baton I'm talking about here. We need wisdom on how to fight, on how to war. We need wisdom. Joshua had the wisdom. Hallelujah. But God had also put upon him that warrior spirit upon him. Hallelujah. He had that. Everything in Christ is repetition. The next battle will require a different preparation and provision from the Lord. Personally, in my life, it was overcoming the fear and publicly speaking. But once I overcame that, I began to build upon that by being myself. Okay, I don't have to be like that person or that preacher there or this preacher, this. The Lord is just showing me who I am and just be myself, creating a confidence that through God, I can do all things. Hallelujah. And the Lord showed me that. The Lord helped me throughout all the years. I'm really thankful for that. See, when you realize you are weak, and you bring it to Jesus, he makes you strong. Hallelujah. But he's the one, not you. It's not according to your talents. You have to always rely on the Lord before you preach, before you do anything. You need him every single moment of the day. Hallelujah. That's your preparation. Make sure your heart is prepared. Say, he's about to make me strong in my weakness. Say it again. He's about to make me strong in my weakness. Hallelujah. So it's a strength that's in me. Praise his holy name. Now, there's another command that Joshua issues to his officers to relay. He says, remember the word. Remember. Do not forget where you came from and what God has told you. See, I put a combination of two verses here. Philippians 4.13 and 2 Corinthians 5.17. It's a combo. Just remember this. I am a new creation who can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it's him who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And thirdly, Joshua receives encouragement. Praise his name. Now God spoke to him and gave him a command. And he took that command. And now he's given a command to, Hey, everybody, God has given me a command. Now we're going. Now you guys need to get ready. Remember the word of God that he spoke to Moses and spoke to me. Just remember his word that you learned. So then the officers, in full obedience and unity in Joshua, said this. All that you command us, we will do. Now they're telling this to Joshua. And wherever you send us, we will go. In other words, aye, aye, captain. We heard you, Josh. General Josh, we heard you. Hallelujah. We're going to do this. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Hallelujah. And as God is with you, we're going to keep following you. Come hell or high water, like they say. They were reaffirming Joshua. We're with you, every single one of us. And look at verse 18. He says, And whoever rebels your command and does not heed your words 
in all that you command shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. And you know, verse 18 happened. Well, maybe you'll look at that at some point in time. It happened in Ai with Achan. That's another story. So they were firm with Joshua. We're going to obey you in all that the Lord has commanded. What you tell us to do, we're going to do. You got it from the Lord. You give it to us and it's going to get done. General Joshua, hallelujah. <laughs> Imagine if every church and its members declared that in their sanctuaries. Everything I just declared here, according to what the, the officers said. What a potentially powerful statement of declaration that is in the heart of a unified local church. Imagine the growth and increase that could come to fruition, both individually and corporately. And to those who refuse to adhere to that, well... Receive all of our boots to your butt in the name of the Lord and out you go. You're not going to come in our church and become rebellious and do all these rebellious things. If you don't want to change, out you go. Because here, we're listening to the word of God. We're obeying God's word. Hallelujah. If you can't receive the word of God and you refuse to receive and you're going to continue in whatever you want to do, well, you better receive our boots on your butt on your way out. That's basically what he was saying here. So, that's the baton that we are picking up today. It's a baton of wisdom going into war. What to do when we get there. What to do even before we get there. Listening to God is the first thing. Obeying the word of God is the very first thing. Hallelujah. Say with me, I have Joshua's baton firmly gripped in my hand. Say that. I have Joshua's baton firmly gripped in my hand. It's a baton of wisdom and spiritual warfare that is victorious in every battle that comes to me. Hallelujah. You see, if you did that and you take that to your heart, you're going to be victorious because you choose to obey and walk by faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. And the Lord will be with you every single day as you do that. Thank you, Lord. Now give the Lord, wherever you are, Go ahead and give them that same shout that they had when God told them to shout when the walls of Jericho came down. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for that last shout of victory. And I just pray, oh God, that your people would be blessed with this message, Lord God, and that you would strengthen them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Go in the Lord. March fiercely by the Spirit, in Jesus' name. Have a great week, and hopefully this week you will have won many, many battles, in Jesus' name. Amen.